not come into play as much. You know, Chongjun does have that Venusaur, which if it's like a typical Venusaur, will be carrying that sleep powder. Uh, but still, you know, a very interesting Pokemon to have in your toolkit. And what I find super interesting is that Chongjun has a Tapu Fini of his own as well. Um, I feel like Tapu Fini is one of those Pokemon that in the past for VGC has been very, very popular because of that Misty Terrain ability. You know, a lot of times, especially when you're playing at a high level at these later rounds at a regional, possibly, you know, top cut rounds, uh, you see a lot of use of stats. A very interesting pick right now. Does have access to attack. Uh, can do some great damage with Moongeist Beam. We've seen a lot of them with Meteor Beam plus the White Herb item in order to get, or the Power Herb item in order to make sure that uh, attack charges up immediately in one turn. In this situation, though, I feel like you have to take a more passive play. Groudon, happy to go for Precipice Blades for some nice chip damage. Maybe this Lunala goes for some damage as well. Or, uh, you know, because you don't really have a way to stop Trick Room. I mean, you know, certainly Lunala does have access to it, but uh, in this situation, given that Jeremy's not going to be putting out a lot of damage on the field anyways, you might as well take advantage of that and then just see how the turn goes. Will there be Trick Room? Precipice Blades connects onto both, but doesn't do too much. Nature Nature's Madness connecting onto Groudon, and that does 50% of its HP, as Nature's Madness will always take half of your remaining HP. The Trick Room, though, from uh, Porygon 2 will twist the dimensions, but it goes back to normal because Lunawa was calling the Trick Room. And that is a great call from Chongjun, turn one, game one. It's a very tough read to make, because if you guess wrong, you're setting Trick Room up for your opponent, and that is never a situation that you want to be in. Instead, now Jeremy has to play this game of Will Lunala Trick Room again? Do I attack and hope that Will Lunala will Trick Room again? Uh, but really, it looks like, based off the damage from that first Precipice Blades, we're going to need two to three more hits on each of these Pokemon in order to pick up those knockouts. So uh, whatever this Pokemon coming in for the Switch will be taking a lot of damage. But if it's Incineroar with the Shucka Berry, like we've been seeing consistently all day, that is a great switch to get in here, as it will threaten the Lunala with Dark-type attacks and just, again, not take much damage from the Groudon at this point. Chungjun not switching out. Instead, will stay in with his two uh, restricted Pokemon here, and it will be Dynamax Groudon on his side there. So a Pokemon who, with the sun up, going for a Max Flare can do a lot of damage, potentially getting Max Quakes to boost your both your and Lunala's special defense is a, a really effective strategy. Meteor Beam, though, from Lunala. So you were talking about the Power Herb. That's a, a held item, something you'd be familiar with, like Xerneas, which takes a two turn or two turn attack and lets you use it in one. So you'll get that special attack boost from Meteor Beam and actually use the attack on the same turn. Oh, if it went into the Incineroar, that would have been a great read, but instead it still does considerable damage to the Porygon 2, so not half bad for Chungjin. Then the Max Quake into Porygon 2, takes it down, and then unless Jeremy has the Calyrex uh, or another uh, another way to get Trick Room up in this matchup, that, that was really his best chance that went down. I mean, it would be that Calyrex Ice Rider if you're looking at this team that also has access to Trick Room, but Chongjun realizing that I just need to get the damage down on the field at this point. Getting the special attack boost on that uh, Lunala as well will mean that if it decides to go for the Moongeist Beam into the Tapu Fini, it's probably going to find a knockout at this point as it's one of the most powerful ghost type attacks available. It is also Lunala's signature move and quite frankly is one of the best animations it's in the entire animation. game. It's a great animation. I was, was going to say, yeah. <laughs> but this Groudon, a great opportunity to go for that Dynamax, building up the special defense so that Tapu Fini won't be dealing as much damage if Reshiram is Jeremy's last restricted Pokemon, which I don't think it's going to be based off of the Trick Room plays we saw earlier. It'll also help that defense as well, but there it is. Let's just sit back and enjoy it. Just take a moment and enjoy the, moment. And being attacked by the moon because that's <laughs> actually what happened there in that animation. Top of Vinny hanging on just barely in the red there with 22 HP, and now who does Groudon target? It is the Top of Vinny, the double target. Chungjin knowing his damage calculations, understanding that the moon guys beam even at plus one was not going to be enough to take down Finny. So a double target takes it out and Jeremy is down to his final Pokemon. That'll be the Incineroar and something else he reveals. Throat Chop into Lunala is going to knock it out. Doesn't have the Shadow Shield anymore. So at that point, four times weakness to the dark. Never seen a chance. It didn't, but it did just enough damage to get the job done. Now that Jeremy is down to his last two Pokemon, 
Uh, we will have the opportunity for Chung Jun to send in the Incineroar, which is a very safe Pokemon to send in at this point in time, and then decide, do I want to go for Fake Out? Do I want to go for that parting shot like we've been seeing many trainers, like, you know, forego the Fake Out in favor of getting that switch in? And depending on what Chung Jun's last Pokemon is and how it matches up against the Calyrex Ice Rider in particular, that could be key here uh, for this win condition. You know, I think that if you don't necessarily have a great matchup, maybe it's the Venusaur as your last Pokemon or the Thunderous, uh, you go ahead and just keep these two Pokemon out on the field, go for maybe a Max Flare, possibly even a Flare Blitz into that Calyrex and just let the Incineroar sit on the field. It, it's not gonna be able to do too much than Intimidated. You know, both these Pokemon are gonna resist a lot of its attacks. Um, and really focus in on the Ice Rider, Calyrex, because if there is a Pokemon that could find a win condition for Jeremy at this point in time, it would be that Calyrex. It would most likely be using its ability to get attack boosts off of knockouts, and uh, that's just something you really want to avoid. Chungjin actually switching out his Incineroar into Top Infinity, revealing his fourth Pokemon in this matchup. And then the Max Quake going into the Incineroar. We saw it was holding the Shooting Barrier, so this is going to do reduced damage. But that means on this turn, Jeremy's Calyrex Ice Rider has not been targeted down. So we'll be able to get an attack off, potentially a Glacial Lance into the uh, into the Groudon, which would be super effective. But the parting shot from Incineroar, not using it for the switching capabilities, obviously, because he's down to two Pokemon. Instead, just trying to lower the attack and special attack. No Glacial Lance. Instead, Gabby, the Trick Room, which will twist the dimensions. Finally, Jeremy has been able to get what he wanted on turn one, which was to have these slow Pokemon moving faster. But Chong Jun's remaining Pokemon have such high health. Stalling through these Trick Room turns, it's going to be difficult, but I think it's definitely within reason. One thing Chong Jun could go for this turn would be switch out the Groudon, uh, maybe protect the Groudon if you have access to it, just to buy that one turn. Um, and then get that Incineroar back out on the field, get that Intimidate down on that Calyrex once again, and then you have a Fake Out, and then you, again, are just slowly ticking through these Trick Room turns. At this point in time, Chong Jun's win condition, I think, is more sensitive around stalling out the remainder of Trick Room and just denying Jeremy knockouts or more than anything else. So as long as you keep your bulky Pokemon on the field, as long as you keep these Intimidates coming to lower the attack, you're really setting yourself up for a decent amount of success but you do still have that Dynamax to worry about. That's right, Jeremy has not Dynamaxed yet in this matchup, so uh, choosing now is the time as Calyrex Ice Rider is going to get very big with a lot of potential damage output and as well as doubling its HP thanks to the Dynamax. Chungjin also switched Groudon to save it in the back into the Incineroar, got another Intimidate, and that is a, uh, that is a self-activating Throat Chop from Jeremy's Incineroar. I was actually wondering if this Calyrex was holding weakness policy compared to any of the other items you can usually see on a Calyrex. And this will be a plus two Glacial Lance, unfortunately, <laughs> into the Fire type, which it wanted to target down the grout on there. So we'll set up the hail, uh, but now Chung Jun knows, if you didn't already, that this is a weakness policy uh, boosting Calyrex, and then the heal pulse is actually just gonna heal up Incineroar all that damage it lost. I think the Intimidates have really helped out this uh, this Incineroar as well when it came to taking that Max Hailstorm. You know, even though the weakness policy was activated, it's not really at plus two because there just has been so many switching and revolving doors and Intimidates and all that fun stuff. Uh, but again, more importantly, we found another out for Chung Jun with the reveal of that Heal Pulse. You know, I, I don't think Tapu Fini uh, is... It, it does run Heal Pulse a lot, especially in Series 12, but in past formats, it's really not the move of choice. You only run Heal Pulse in situations where you're looking to sort of keep one of your Pokemon just on the field for as long as possible. You know, you like it on a slower Pokemon because then you take damage and then you heal right back up before the start of the next turn. And in this situation in particular, I can't help but wonder if seeing how much damage that Max Hailstorm did and assuming that this Calyrex Ice Rider doesn't have access to like a Max Quake or some other attack that can deal super effective damage against either of these two Pokemon. You just click heal posts and maybe you go for the throat chops as well onto the opposing Calyrex. The weakness policy is already gone. You can get that damage in a little bit more comfortably and then you just heal up your own Pokemon after the attacks connect. 
This is a max Hailstorm, but it's into two Pokemon that resist. So either you hit the Incineroar who resists it, or you hit Tapu Fini who also resists it. So it's really not great options for Jeremy to choose from here. Nature's Madness into Incineroar will bring it down to a quarter of its HP, even a little lower thanks to the Hail. And at this point, you know, Jeremy's down to these last two Pokemon. The Calyrex has been intimidated, and you're sitting in front of two Pokemon that really don't care about taking max Hailstorms. Yeah, one key thing that happened that last turn was Throat Chop from Jeremy's Incineroar into Chung Jun's Incineroar meant that a parting shot most likely was not happening that turn. As a result, you know, that's the safe switch in for Groudon in this situation. You don't want to switch it in at the beginning of the turn because you're going to take a Max Hailstorm that's most likely going to be a knockout, even with all the damage reduction on the field. And then you're giving the Calyrex the boost, and then that's sort of the start of the win condition for Jeremy. So it's unfortunate that this Incineroar is sort of stuck on the field at this point. You know, seeing how much damage it took the previous turn, it's possible that the combination of another Throat Chop plus a Max Hailstorm will be enough to pick up the knockout there. Uh, but, you know, realistically speaking, there's only two more turns of Trick Room remaining. Tapu Fini is still at full health, and it looks like Chong Jun is risking the switching of the Groudon. I wonder if he thinks he can take this Max Hailstorm and then just heal it back up with that Heal Pulse and find the last two turns of Trick Room that way. It has been intimidated, so Chung Jun saying, hey, maybe I can actually take the Max Hailstorm, and like you were saying, use the... Uh, the, the heal pulse, that is quite the gamble to take in Swift round nine, oh. and it is a gamble that does not pay off as Groudon is knocked out. Maybe he wasn't expecting the throat chop in collab, you know, combination with the Max Hail turn, but I just wonder what just waiting one more turn for Dynamax to end, and you know, then you don't have that boost to the, the base power, and it would be a spread attack as well, being the Glacial Land, so it even does less damage in VGC. So, um, a bit of a a bit of a risky decision out of Chung Jin there, and it might cost him. It might cost him, but this will get another Intimidate down onto the field. The Incineroar on Jeremy's side of the field is almost knocked out, and really, it's just going to be this Calyrex Ice Rider that's the main threat at this point in time. If Chung Jun can stall out the last turn of Trick Room, we know that the Incineroar and the Tapu Fini will be moving first. Uh, you do have access to fake out once again onto that Calyrex Ice Rider as Dynamax has ended. It might be as simple as clicking Nature's Madness and Flare Blitz on this Incineroar, knocking out the Calyrex, and then following up with a knockout onto the Incineroar in the next turn. Uh, but that's such a tough uh, win condition to fish for because Nature's Madness, you know, it isn't guaranteed to hit. And if you make that miss, I don't know if Flare Blitz will be enough to knock out Calyrex from this range, you know. It, it, it's possible that it could, but it just comes down to how these Pokemon are trained. Yeah, it's definitely a, a close call in this matchup. And, you know, if game one is this exciting, I'm hoping that the rest of the set can play, play out just as exciting. So the Protect from Calyrex is a great call because the Fake Out goes into that slot. And then Jeremy's Parting Shot will target down Chung Jin's Incineroar, lowering his attack there. So if a Flare Blitz happens the next turn, then you're able, you're going to be doing less damage because of the Parting Shot. But Heal Pulse is actually going to help and bring the Incineroar back to almost full HP there. Uh, so even though the Fake Out wanted to Protect, I think Chung Jin's still OK with that turn. Yeah, really, Heal Pulse is also making it a little bit more comfier for this Incineroar to be launching off these Flare Blitzes. The one downside to Flare Blitz is that you do take a ton of recoil damage, you know, depending on how much damage you do to the opposing target. But Heal Pulse, especially knowing that it can heal about half your health back, I mean, that's really the maximum amount of chip damage you're going to take from it at this point, given how much damage is already down onto the field. So if Chong Jun is confident in his targeting and his predictions this turn, he could go for a Flare Blitz plus a heal pulse into that Calyrex Ice Rider. You know, Calyrex might be going for another trick room here. You have to be very careful about that threat. And then you just let the hail knock out the Incineroar on the opposing side of the field. Uh, instead, Moonblast will be knocking out that Incineroar. So curious to see. Will this Calyrex Ice Rider get an attack in this turn? That's a big deal. We're going to find out. This is Flare Blitz. He has been, he's lowered his attack though. So Calyrex hangs on with 50 HP. Now, you will trick room. I was going to say, do you trick room to get the speed advantage back on your side if you're Jeremy? And that was the decision that he went for. So you have the speed. You know for sure Calyrex is going faster. 
but if you can't knock out this uh, in almost full HP in Incineroar, then what do you do? There's also the Tapu Fini as well. I mean, the Incineroar is a scary Pokemon, you know, type-wise into this matchup, but how do you deal damage to Tapu Fini? I mean, Glacial Lance is not going to hit it super effectively. Both these Pokemon uh, won't be taking a lot of damage from it. And as a result, I think you're forced to rely on a different attack. And we don't know what that is. It turns out it's high horsepower, which certainly will do enough damage. Oh, it's, it's it not doesn't. enough. <laughs> so even revealing the ground attack to hit Incineroar is not enough. And because of Calyrex's ability, the double ability with Unnerve, the Incineroar was not able to eat its potential Shukaberry, which we've seen like every Incineroar is running Shukaberry at this point. Uh, so that's a big win for Chung Jin Ping in game one there. Seemed like they were just very confident throughout. Even, even when Jeremy had advantageous turns and moments like, okay, he successfully got Trick Room up for, uh, he had this night, you know, the nice switch in or something like that, the throw chop to stop the parting shot. Chung Jin never, was concerned. He didn't, he didn't falter from his game plan, which was using Tapu Fini in its best role in this format, which is kind of the medic of the team, making sure everybody sticks around for longer than they should be. Yeah, Tapu Fini, the medic, and uh, I guess Incineroar, the tank, would probably be how there that would go. work out to go RPG terms. I'd play that RPG. I would too, I would too. But I, I think the other thing that's really important to call out here is talking about tanks, that Porygon 2, you know, one of the bulkiest Pokemon, I think, available to VGC in any format it's allowed and usually holds that Eviolite item, which because it's not a fully evolved Pokemon means that it has right. even more bulk on top of everything. It didn't do much in that game one. We saw it go for Trick Room turn one, game one. Lunala immediately reversed it. And the next thing you know, that Porygon 2 was knocked out and it didn't have the opportunity to go for damage. It didn't have the opportunity to try and do some damage control, maybe, if it has Eerie Impulse, for example. Um, and I think that's going to be a key thing to keep an eye on going into game two on Jeremy's side of the field because that Porygon 2 was removed and then that Calyrex Ice Rider was forced to act not only as the main damage dealing Pokemon on his side of the field, but also the speed control Pokemon. And that's just a big role and admittedly Calyrex Ice Rider you know it, there is a Calyrex riding a Glastriere there so there is some potential for a lot uh, for it to do a lot but I just don't think it was set up in a way that it could handle both those roles in that game one I think you know you're saying that Calyrex has the pressure of doing most of the damage it has the pressure of doing all of the damage when you look at the four Porygon Finny and then Incineroar and Ka and Calyrex if you don't bring Reggie Lucky you don't bring you don't bring Reshiram those, if you're just relying on Calyrex there, even under Trick Room, Tapu Fini and Incineroar both resist your super powerful either Glacial Lance or Max Hailstorms. So I wonder if a, a potential adjustment from the Regilecki, who is very apt in a position against the Tapu Fini, something like that, the fastest Pokemon in the field, using Electrowebs to help your team make sure you're faster, maybe that can be an adjustment here in game two. I think you have to reconsider how you run Trick Room in game two. And, you know, a lot of times, especially with teams like Jeremy's, you have mixed modes. You know, you have your mode where you can commit fully to Trick Room. You have your mode where you have a late game Trick Room, which is kind of what happened in that game one accidentally. It looks like we're seeing another Trick Room lead from Jeremy, but looks can be deceiving. Depending on what Pokemon he has in the back, you know, he might be able to make a prediction here and not go for Trick Room turn one and let that Lunala set up Trick Room for him. Yeah, the Lunala ground on uh, the same lead for Chung Jin as he had in game one. It was pretty, it was relatively effective for him. Obviously, he won the game, but uh, also had the turns from uh, from the Dynamax there that were helping out. So Lunala is a Pokemon with Shadow Shield. Last time around, Tapu Fini broke Shadow Shield, remember, with the Nature's Madness? Yeah, now, I remember that. Now there isn't that option on this turn. No, but what if I told you there were two Shadow Fields on Shadow Shields Shadow on the field. Shadow Fields <laughs> on the Shields, yes. <laughs> Try to say that 10 times fast I don't, I don't during break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that Porygon 2 actually just traced Shadow Shield, which is a oh. very interesting development to keep an eye on as this turn one plays out. That's one of the tricky things with Porygon is it's already frustrating to deal with and sometimes it will trace the great abilities in a certain matchup like this one with the Shadow Shield. So Tapu Fini has switched onto the field for both 
of these trainers, the Groudon and the Incineroar have left the field. And now we are going to have Chung Jun's Lunala uh, going with that Meteor Beam using its power herb, just like we saw in game one. Boosts that special attack, uh, but this rock attack is not going to be hitting any super effective targets. So the Tapu Fini, even though it's a boosted attack, is going to uh, to take that to about half of its HP. And unfortunately for Chung Jun, he can't use it twice in a row because you already ate your, already used up your, your power herb. Eerie Impulse, though, from Porygon will will harshly lower Lunala's special attack. So now, are you in a spot that you're pretty much forced to switch out the Lunala, but then you lose that special attack buff? I mean, you've already lost it effectively at you this lost point half anyways. Of it, yeah. yeah, yeah, true, true. But, uh, you know, this adjustment with this Porygon 2, I think, is really key to how this game is going to play out because, you know, Porygon 2 could have gone for the Eerie Impulse in Game 1, didn't and got punished for it. Now this Lunala is already off on a back foot. I mean, certainly, yes, this Moonguys Beam is going to deal a lot of damage, but Porygon 2 can just continually ear the impulse into that Lunala spot and eventually force the switch. Yeah, and you can see just how little damage it's doing thanks to that eerie impulse. Even the double target with Moonblast is not enough to take out Jeremy's Tapu Fini. This Nature's Madness will go into the Lunala, breaking that Shadow Shield, and now Porygon very smug saying I'm the only Pokemon on the field that has Shadow Shield right now. <laughs> I can't say it 10 times, but I can say it one time. All right, right that's fair. <laughs> uh, so now the Lunala's kind of, at this point, it didn't work out for you. You do have the Wiggle Room. Maybe you just let it go down, and that gives you a safe switch into something in the back. And more information about this Porygon 2 with that foul play revealed as well. Lunala holding on with just enough health to go for one more attack, but uh, while it is enough to knock out this Tapu Fini, I think Porygon 2 is going to be more than capable of picking up that knockout unless we see another heal pulse from Fini. And it, there it is. From the from the depths of despair <laughs> where you thought Lunala didn't stand a chance, now it's back over half of its HP. So that's how strong Heal Pulse can be as a move. And that's where uh, I think in other years you see Tapu Fini can do other things like Choice Specs Muddy Water or other, you know, other options. But when you have these restricted pairs with it, they are so strong and they're so integral to your team that it's the amount of health that you can recover from a teammate with heal pulse is significantly more important than the amount of damage that Tapu Fini can output with a Muddy Water or Moon Blast. Exactly, and I, I think this Tapu Fini is going to be key now that we're in a situation again where Trick Room is up on the field, Calyrex is on the field. You know, Tapu Fini may be able to help Chong Jun get that Incineroar, assuming it is his last Pokemon out on the field relatively unharmed this turn. But that's still going to be a very tough matchup for him to play through. Now, one thing I have to wonder, especially knowing the Porygon 2's moveset, you know, Eerie Impulse, Foul Play, Trick Room, something. You know, you have to assume it's a Recover, it's a Porygon 2. Uh, could be Try Attack, I guess. We'll have to see what's revealed. Uh, but maybe you try and sneak that Incineroar in and possibly Dynamax the Incineroar. It's a bit of a tough read here, but knowing that your opponent is going for the Dynamax on the Calyrex Ice Rider, if I am correct, uh, it, it is one of your best options as it will allow you to hit it for super effective damage. You know, you will get the sun boost, which will help out a lot in the future as well. Um, and I'm really curious to see how Jeremy is going to activate that weakness policy at this point, because you have to imagine foul play would do a ton of damage to that Calyrex. Top of Fini will protect on this turn in case anything from the Porygon goes into that slot and a protect as well out of Lunala. So Chung Jun saying this first turn of Dynamax, just gonna take it slow. Uh, but the <laughs> Jeremy never even targeted down either of those Pokemon, so the protects don't matter. Foul Play does a pretty solid amount to the Calyrex, but it also will boost its attack and special attack by two stages, thanks to that helpful weakness policy. Max Blake into the protect though, not doing too much damage. Now what Jeremy really wants is this next turn. All right, they just double protected. Uh, not very good odds of doing it again. Like now is the time to do some damage. And unlike the previous game, this Calyrex Ice Rider has that weakness policy boost up without any prior Intimidates down onto the field. And as a result, I think that Chung Jun is in a position where you just have to let something get knocked out so you get that free switch in. You know, sending in that Incineroar would be super helpful with the Intimidate, but if you switch it into a Max Quake, that's gonna be a knockout. You know, you don't get access to that Shuckaberry. 
you have to feel very confident about where you're placing it on the field and whether or not heel pulse would be enough to even recover from the amount of damage you're going to be taking this turn. Incineroar must have a very unnerving feeling in its gut right now because oh. it knows it can't eat that Shookaberry if it gets hit by this Max Quake, Gabby. And yes, I'm very proud of that joke. So we are going to have a, <laughs> a, a Dynamax on Chungjin's and uh, Nobody saw how, how upset Gabby was with me. I was very proud of it. <laughs> Tapu Fini is the Dynamax choice for Chungjun here in game two. It's a Pokemon uh, using either Max, uh, you know, setting up the rain with it or Max Starfall if the terrain went away. Uh, but really more just being a huge tank by having all that additional bulk because of the double HP. Foul play does effectively no damage, and then Max Quake into Incineroar. He does call it, and he gets punished for it as Chungjun's Incineroar gets knocked out instead of the Lunala. And those special defense boosts will mean that this Tapu Fini can only do so much damage here. And that Porygon 2 still sitting at pretty full health. You know, we're going to get another Chilling Nay boost as well, which will only help this Calyrex out at this point. But I think the other key thing to keep in mind is that Max Starfall not going to do any damage to either of these two Pokemon at this point. Porygon 2 is more than capable of going for a Eerie Impulse into that Tapu Fini as well, just to try and lower its special attack as low as it possibly can. Given that Chongjun is sending in that Lunala, maybe you wait a turn for that, but it's okay. You've got plenty of time at this point. Uh, Porygon 2 free to target down either of these two Pokemon, and Chongjun can't even try and heal up Lunala at this point because Tapu Fini is Dynamax, that means Heal Pulse is just a normal Max Guard. Yeah, I, Jeremy can definitely take it slow right now. There is no pressure on his end. Of course, this is the last turn of Dynamax for Jeremy, but uh, you understand that you're in the driver's seat at this moment because Chungjun's only Pokemon in the back is a Groudon who really doesn't want to face Calyrex under Trick yeah. Room. Uh, so this Tapu Fini who did just barely double-digit damage on that Moonblast, uh, or excuse me, on the uh, Max Starfall on the previous turn, you're not too worried about the damage coming from Chungjun and Max Guard out of Tapu Fini on this turn and Lunala again. So that's now multiple times in just game two alone, we have seen a double protect from Chungjun's side. Eerie Impulse goes into the Max Guard, and then now it's up to Max Hailstorm. We see the animation, which means it goes into Lunala's Protect. 25% of the intended damage, and it is enough for a knockout. The first Chilling the chilling Nade boost absolutely made sure that this second one got the knockout. Yeah, and it's a really tough position for Chungjun to be in as well. You know, I think you hope that the Calyrex targets down the Tapu Fini in that spot, as your win condition at this point is stall out Trick Room. There's only one turn left, but that's going to be a very difficult turn to get through at this point. And then have that Groudon out on the field, you know, hitting Calyrex with uh, physical attacks, so going around those special defense boosts from those Max Quakes that we saw, um, and then just hope for the best at that point. You know, there still is the Porygon 2 and the Incineroar on Jeremy's side of the field, so even in playing towards that win condition, all Jeremy has to do is, you know, do some switching, get some Intimidates down on the field, and maybe hope for a Precipice Blade Miss or two. Um, it, it's really a tough spot for Chung Jun to be in. As long as Jeremy is able to get consistent damage out on the field this turn, which you can, you have access to Glacial Lance once again. You're going to be able to target down both these Pokemon. Foul play from that Porygon 2 also going to be fantastic into that Groudon. Uh, it's going to be really tough for Chung Jun to find an opening at this point. Even if he does, all Calyrex has to do next turn is protect and then Porygon 2 can trip room or maybe you just go for some good old fake out flinches to find that opportunity for time as well. Incineroar entering the battlefield in that slot for the Porygon. So you will intimidate Groudon and because Chungjin's down to his final two Pokemon, he cannot reset this drop. It's not going to matter anyway <laughs> because Glacier Lance gets the knockout as that is now Calyrex's third attack boost thanks to its Chilling Day ability. So uh, Calyrex Ice Rider has effectively used both of its abilities, both the Unnerve to stop Incineroar's Berry and the, the Chilling Day to, to start steamrolling, similar to how Beast Boost used to work back in the day. Like you keep get you get one attack boost and it helps get to the second and the third and by that point you're winning the match. Yeah, and being able to kick things off with a weakness policy activation as well makes it that much easier to get the snowball started, if you will. I think that Chong Jun did his best to try and find Groudon a spot on the field once Trick Room had ended, but unfortunately, I, I don't know if that Groudon is running Protect. I feel like if it was, you have to use it in that situation, so could be an indication that this is another one of those Assault Vest variant Groudon that don't run the Protect because you can't. 
And uh, as a result, we're going to be moving into game three with, after some really incredible adjustments from Jeremy, going for a uh, more consistent style of trick room play, I think they're not going for it initially, waiting until that Lunala essentially was removed from the field, and then being able to use the Porygon 2 and the Eerie Impulse and the Max Quakes to really just ensure there was no damage output from Chong Jun. Game three, round nine, a potential win and in. What more can we ask for here to cap off the first day of the Indianapolis Regionals? I don't think we can ask for much. I mean, we had a Lugia on stream earlier. We have this fantastic matchup now. I think that uh, the content gods are smiling on us today, thankfully. And, you know, going into this game three, I really do want to take a moment to talk about possible adjustments because I think if you're in Jeremy's shoes, you found the way that you run Trick Room in this match. Up. You know, you have both the Porygon 2 and the Calyrex Ice Rider. You take things a little bit slower, you find the opening, and then you go for it. The one thing that I'm very curious to see on Chung Jun's side of the field is game one, we saw Lunala go for that trick room play. You know, it really did make a difference in the grand scheme of things. The interesting thing is that Lunala's not being one hit by anything we've seen on Jeremy's side of the field so far. I wonder if you just sort of play it slower with your new Lunala and you try to go for a Trick Room foregoing damage at one of those points so that way your Groudon can come into the field, can attack prior to the Calyrex Ice Rider and then find that opportunity in that way. Uh, that being said, Jeremy could still make an adjustment here and just leave Trick Room behind. You know, we sort of talked about it a little bit as a possible Game 2 adjustment. You have the Regieleki, you have the Reshiram. Both of those Pokemon are going to be doing some big damage into this Pokemon that we've seen Chong Jun bring so far, it's an option. I, I feel like Jeremy, at least the way that he played those two games, I feel like his comfort mode is going to be Trick Room, so most likely we will see that persisting into game three. But the unique thing about this team is that you can take your opponent completely by surprise and just run that separate mode and uh, try to just power through that way. The thing that really stands out to me with Chung Jun's Lunala is in both games, one and two, he used, he activated the power herb and you know used the meteor beam, but into Incineroar switching out and into a target that didn't mind taking it. And so I wonder, maybe that's a byproduct of leading Lunala and thinking I need to get the special attack boost and knock this Incineroar out right away. Is there a world where you can save Lunala for the back? Maybe when you handle Jeremy's Incineroar, that seems like the best option against it besides foul play on, on the Porygon. Save Lunala for later and then let it try to steamroll at the, the end of the match. It's a tough call. I mean, the thing about Lunala, though, is that it really is the anti-trick room Pokemon on Chung Jun's side of the field, but we're seeing a big mix-up from both these trainers into this game three, and I'm very curious about what this means, especially for Chung Jun's strategy. Much to Chung Jun's dismay, the Incineroar is not in the opening side for Jeremy here in game three. Instead, it is Tapu Fini and Porygon. He has the Incineroar and T Thunderous on his side. I say that he won Incineroar because if he was intimidated, Thunderous is a great defiant Pokemon. So uh, actually, excuse me, Porygon too is a great defiant Pokemon. Oh, I'm sorry, it, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I missed that too. I missed that memo. Uh, so uh, defiant is a, a great anti-intimidate Ability. If Lunala's anti trick room, the Defiant is going to boost Thunderous' attack stat instead of lowering it. And then you use that as a Dynamaxer, and it can, it can really uh, be very strong. Yeah, the other interesting thing about Thunderous as well is that uh, it can change the terrain, which may come into play here. I, I don't think we've seen Misty Terrain really used for Misty Terrain at this point, but a nice uh, electric terrain could be helpful here. Um, as well, the Thunderous could also have access to uh, Dark-type attacks, which may make a difference against that Calyrex in the future. Uh, could also just be a good old taunt Pokemon and go for that uh, taunt to stop a Trick Room. As you know, Eevee Light, you know that they're not running Mental Herb. That's not something you have to worry about. Uh, for now, though, uh, most likely, given this Dynamax, going to be targeting down that Tapu Fini on Jeremy's side of the field. It was Nature's Madness that broke Shadow Shield. Both games could be the opportunity to try and shut that down. Thunderous with the Dynamax uh, on this turn. Fake out, wing to Porygon 2. So if you wanted to go for Trick Room, that plan has been stopped now. And Max Knuckle into Porygon this time. Does not do too much. Max Knuckle is really one of those Dynamax moves that's kind of weird where it has a lower base power than other Dynamax attacks because of the potential steamroll aspect of boosting your attack every single time. Uh, but the Heal Pulse is essentially negating all of that damage that Porygon 2 did. Uh, or took on this turn. Gabby, I think what's interesting is the kind of the flex of the turn one Dynamax on 
the Thunderous is essentially telling Jeremy, you can never switch Incineroar in while I'm Dynamax because you're going to get punished for it. And the attack boost as well are going to make it so much easier for that Incineroar to power through the potential Calyrex Ice Rider in the back. Now, mind you, that Tapu Fini, uh, assuming it has a Water-type attack of some sort, can do some nice damage into that Incineroar. So that, that condition may not play out, but after one attack boost on that Thunderous, I would assume a Max Lightning is going to do so much damage to that Tapu Fini. Yes, you do have to worry about that Porygon 2 setting up Trick Room in the interim, but uh, it might just be something you have to risk as a second Max Knuckle it's possible that this plus two Flare Blitz on the Incineroar will be enough to knock out that Porygon 2 and remove Trick Room from the field. So Porygon is at half health, but never mind, as Tapu Fini is faster than the Incineroar, so it goes back up to full HP, almost for the most part. Here is the plus two Flare Blitz, though, from Incineroar. This is going to be very strong into Porygon. Brings it down to around 40% of its HP. Not enough there. And Porygon is successfully able to set up Trick Room, so now that the dimensions are twisted, the slower Pokemon on the field, like the Porygon, will be, will be moving first. Good information, though, for these trainers as we finish out this round. Tapu Fini is now slower than the Incineroar. So if Chong Jun wants, you can go for the knockout on that Porygon 2 at this point in time before it has the opportunity to go for foul plays. You know, both these Pokemon have those attack boosts, which means that foul play is going to deal a ton of damage. Porygon 2 could also potentially heal itself up if its last move is recover. Um, but at this point in time, I think if you're Jeremy, you want that knockout to happen because that's a free switch in for your Calyrex. That's a quick switch in for your Calyrex, and that means you would have three turns of Trick Room to go for your Dynamax. Max Hailstorm going to do a ton of damage here. Uh, oh, definitely the, the Pokemon The foul to play does even more damage because of the two Max Knuckle boosts. That was a lot of damage into a neutral attack. And here's the Flare Blitz into pouring on two. Will knock it out with the critical hit. It definitely didn't need it, but it is nice to get on that turn. Jeremy does have a free switch in, though into whatever he wants, which we assume is going to be the Calyrex. And here's the Nature's Madness. Here's the Nature's Madness, going to do exactly half health to that Incineroar, but more importantly, leaves the Tapu Fini open for a Max Lightning at plus two attack, is enough to pick up that knockout. So Jeremy, you know, has the Trick Room out on the field, which is exactly what he's looking for, has the free switch in into the Calyrex Ice at this point in time. But what is that last Pokemon going to be? And will Calyrex Ice on its own be enough to play through this matchup. If that last Pokemon is Incineroar and we see a Defiant activation here as well, it is going to be so critical for Jeremy to find a knockout on this Thunderous, which... On the list of things you don't want to see in life, no. this is this is at least top three. You don't <laughs> want to see this Defiant Thunderous with all these attack boosts, and you have to switch in Incineroar because you're down to your last two Pokemon. This is a very critical moment for Jeremy. Down four, po or down four Pokemon to two in this spot. Thunderous' Dynamax has ended at, at this point at least, so you know it can't be boosting it up anymore at this point. Uh, but Chung Jun is feeling very confident right now. A Fake Out plus a Glacial Lance may be enough to knock out the Incineroar at this point and certainly would be enough to knock out the Thunderous. The one thing we haven't seen about this Pokemon yet in this matchup is what its moveset is. We know that it has a fighting type move, most likely Brick Break to shut down those annoying Grimmsnarl we've seen earlier. And it has an electric type move of some sort, probably Wild Charge, that's usually what they go for. But we didn't know it had Protect, and this Protect here could be absolutely critical. Incineroar targets his own Calyrex teammate to activate the weakness policy. So now the Calyrex has plus two attack with this potential spread move, Glacial Lance. It's gonna dodge the Thunderous because he protected, so no damage there. This is a resistant attack into Incineroar that's kind of boosted out or neutralized out by the fact that he has weakness policy. Is it enough? It is! Incineroar goes down, so he does not have a chance. That A plus two Flare Blitz into Calyrex would have been a disaster for, for Jeremy, so luck, fortunately for him, he doesn't have to deal with that. Had Jeremy gone for the Dynamax that turn on that Calyrex, he would have been able to only attack one of the Pokemon on Chongjun's side of the field, and that would have resulted in 
that Incineroar getting the opportunity to attack, most likely. I don't think you necessarily necessarily predict the Protect on a Thunderous the way the metagame is shaking out right now. So that was an incredible read from Jeremy there, prioritizing the damage onto both of the Pokemon, knowing that with that weakness policy boost, it would be enough regardless of what happened. Now, Chengjun is in a very interesting position because Shadow Shield is still active on this Lunala. A Throat Chop could certainly take that away. And this might just be Calyrex's opportunity to just continue. Oh, the 30% chance he doesn't get it. Went for the double protect on Thunderous to stall out a turn of Trick Room. Instead, the Glacial Lance will go into the protect, but then also hit the Thunderous here. So that is yet another knockout for the, the, the Calyrex. And as we have seen throughout this entire set, once you get the first KO with Calyrex, it's significantly easier to get the second and the third. And at this point, can Lunala either stall out Trick Room or hang on with two hits here and then reset the Trick Room back to normal dimensions. Uh, it's going to be down to Lunala and Groudon for Chungjin to find out if he can win this set and potentially move on to Top Cut. We didn't see Groudon protect in this position in game two. I would be very surprised to see it in this game given that Groudon are running a lot of Assault Vest right now. It is possible that Jeremy can win this matchup without Dynamax at this point because all you have to do is throat chop that Lunala, go for another Glacial Lance. You know it's going to knock out that Groudon. And uh, let's be real, it's at what, plus four at this point? I'm pretty sure you knock out Lunala at that point as well, but gets the double protect. So Chongju not out of the game quite yet. So he doesn't get it on Thunderous, but he does get it on Lunala, and that's critical. This Glacial Lance, though, is going to connect onto the Groudon. And unfortunately for Chongju, this Groudon never stood a chance here in game three, as this Calyrex Ice Rider is just getting stronger and stronger by the minute here in this matchup. Now, all it has to do is get one more knockout and Jeremy can potentially move on to the top cut. The Twisted Dimensions have returned to normal, so now Lunala's the fastest Pokemon on the field. It still has the Shadow Shield and it still has its Meteor Beam. This is such a tough call to make because if you think the Calyrex is going to protect, you go for the Meteor Beam into that Incineroar, guarantee the knockout. If you think the Calyrex is going to go for Trick Room and the Incineroar go for Throat Chop or an attack, you Moon Geist Beam the Calyrex. And you still have the Dynamax Factor as well, which means that it's possible this Calyrex could just take a Moon Geist Beam, any attack onto this Lunala at this point would knock it out, but that, that is a Dynamax Incineroar. Yeah, Incineroar saying, I'm the star of the show. I'm bringing Jeremy to Top Cut, not the, not the Calyrex, as he will Dynamax and go for a potential Max Darkness. This Meteor Beam is going to boost Lunala's special attack. It's going to use that Power Herb so you can use this Rock Attack in one turn. Both of Jeremy's Pokemon are weak to the Meteor Beam, so who does he target? The Incineroar! And the play works out for him as he has the double HP. He's able to hang on from the attack, and Max Darkness breaks the Shadow, the shadow Shield, and Calyrex is going to clean up the match. That is exactly why you save your Dynamax for the last possible moment in this position. Jeremy also recognizing that if he gets the Trick Room, that's yet another win condition in his favor. You know, yes, it's possible that Chengjun can find three, four, maybe five Protects at this point in time, but given how little health it has and given how that Incineroar is just ready to use that Max Darkness to continually attack at this point, Jeremy Rodriguez just finding those win conditions Conditions. That Calyrex Ice Rider doing a fantastic job of giving him a ride, hopefully straight into Top Cut. One ride straight to top, top Cut for him. I want to just, you know, talking about those last